me is that you understand and know God. Look at your neighbor for me. Tell the person, say, I understand and know my God. And in Daniel eleven thirty two, the word of God also says there, it says, those that know their God. Very, very clear statement. Those that know their God. As if to say, he's classifying some people don't know their God. But those that know their God, it says, the elements, the testimony of it are two things. Number one, they will be strong. And number two, they will do exploits. One area you should not be shut off is the knowledge of God's love. Somebody say, God loves me. You're not sure. It looks like you're thinking about it. Say it again. Say, God loves me. You see, the things of the Spirit, they are word activated. Anything, every power in the realm of the Spirit, they are not thought activated. You can be thinking God loves you. If you don't say it, it doesn't happen. So one more time, release the power in your words. Say, God loves me personally. I don't know why you're apologetic about it. Look at your neighbor and say, it's me he's talking about. God loves me personally. <laughs> Good day. I am Alexander Parampojo, Senior Pastor of Veterans Christian Center, Lagos, Nigeria. As one who has obtained grace in the things of God, I hereby invite you to join us at Veterans Christian Center as I'll take a series on insightful teachings and of course, a celebration service in the next couple of weeks. I'll be teaching by the grace of God, success and prosperity principles for family, finance and future. I and my men will also speak to the leader in you as God plugs you into dimensions of relevance in governance, you will succeed. Regardless of a terrain such as us, I see the future. Make no mistake, God is a God both of principles and miracles. You will experience both the healing power of God's word and spirit. Tangible miracles, I mean. So you see, with the word, spirit and liquid love in our midst, Virtuous Christian Center is the place to be. Together we can, together we will, and together we shall. Build to God a glorious church. Join us today at Virtuous Christian Center and become God's pride. Amen. You've got so much for me, God, and I'm grateful. Everybody put your hands like this, like this. And I'm not ashamed to declare, it's because of you, my Lord and King, that I am saved. Because of you, my Lord and King, that I'm redeemed. It's because of you that I have been made complete. And it's because of you, my Lord and King, that I can sing. Oh, 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 oh.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to our beautiful midweek service. It's our pleasure to receive you once again on this online service. We have promised that all our midweek services will be tuned online on all our stations, Facebook, Instagram, MixLR, YouTube, and you have it. I'm praying that as we bring these messages to you, it will bring life in the name of Jesus Christ that liberation of God's word will come to you the Bible says God sent his word and it healed us from all our diseases God's word is a healer amen I'm praying that as we go into this conversation light will pop up open your heart it will be like a, a moment of enlightenment where you realize that truly you have no reason to be sick now, over the last couple of weeks, we've spoken about this subject and we took our opening text from the beginning, from 3 John verse 2. God's word says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. This tells us unequivocally God's disposition to our success and our health and well-being. You see very clearly there how that God says, look, I want you to prosper and be in health. Exodus chapter um, 15 verse 26, God's word says there, I am the Lord that healeth thee. God heals us. Just think about it. How can somebody be boasting that I'm the one that healed them and I'm the one putting sickness on them again? Never should you accommodate the thoughts that the sickness you are experiencing is from God. Never. The Bible says God does not tempt people with evil. So today, I pray and prophesy, whatever sickness that is in your life dematerializes now in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever illness you've experienced for so long that has celebrated an anniversary in your experience of life, I curse it now. By the token of the blood of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus name. Now recall that we have considered different subjects on this matter. We've spoken about the hygiene to it. We've spoken about the, the administration of health. We've spoken about the usage of right words. We've spoken about different dimensions to the matter. And if you look very closely, you can tell that all of us need to pay attention based on the healthy state of our minds. A few weeks ago, we spoke about the importance of mental health. How the word of God says that whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, he says, think on these things. Philippians 4 verse 8. God wants you to think and have a sound mental health. Not to be worrying. That's why he tells us in that same Philippians verse, chapter 4 verse 6, he says, do not worry about anything. I mean, just think about it. In fact, in Peter, in the book of 1 Peter, he says, cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. In James, he tells us also the same thing. Cast all our cares upon him for he cares for us. I pray that God's care will be evident in your life in Jesus' name. No longer will you be sick. No longer will you be broke in Jesus' name. Now consider what I'm trying to bring out to us today. If you recall, we spoke about the role of our mouth in well-being. We spoke about the role of a seed. How it is important for you to learn to give to the poor. Psalm 41 verse 3 says the Lord will raise him up from his sick bed. God honors our generosity to the poor. And he remembers us in the day of need. It's not in vain that you give. I want you to understand it. Generosity to the poor. And I, I'm not talking about... Now, last week I spoke about generosity to parents. Spoke about generosity to the house of God. And I spoke about generosity to the poor. Very important to understand that they all carry their notes of rewards. You should understand that actions weigh in the realm of spirit. The Bible says God is a God of knowledge by whom actions are weighed. So God weighs our actions. That's true. However, I want to draw your attention to something that interests me today. How that Elisha, Elisha, the one who was a mentee to Elijah, died from sickness. Wow. Now, you need to understand that this was a man who raised people from the dead. <laughs> but his own reason for dying was illness. Now, a lot of people have argued different things that happened to him and all that and all that. But I'm trying to draw your attention that if you are not deliberate about keeping feet, even though you are anointed, you can die from sickness. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. I said that will not be your portion in the name of... Your portion is health and total well-being in the name of Jesus. Now, the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 27, it says, and give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. That means if you leave it to Satan, he wants a place in your life. I want to ask of you not to give Satan any place anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. That whatever foothold you need to cover, God will grant it to you by the message of his spirit in Jesus' name. Now, if you look at how God has helped us thus far, we, we, we see how that God gave us the Holy Communion as a tool, as a guide. And I just want to read a scripture to your hearing here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 
and I'll be reading from verse 27. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, that's talking about the communion, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So if you eat it unworthily, and it's not talking about unworthily that maybe because you are not born again, no. It's saying unworthily in that you do not discern the gravity of the spiritual um, 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 sacraments you are participating in. So he says, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. You know, this scripture gives us an idea of the fact that some persons can take ill in church. And it will be our contemplation that these people took ill maybe because of an illness or a, a, a pandemic somewhere or something but God's word is pointing out to us here that when we administer or discern or utilize or experience or participate in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ without discerning it and to discern it means to be conscious of what it means and the this, this spiritual import of it so you see that just Christ shed his blood and broke his body for our salvation for a demonstration of his life giving ability in John chapter 6 the Bible says that he that eats of this flesh verse 54 and drinks of this blood has life in him I wanted to take a look at these words they are choice words that point to the fact that as believers we can eat the body of the Lord that is the communion and be healed or we eat it undiscernly and be sick I pray that you will not be sick in Jesus' name. So we are looking at how that God is giving us of his life through his body. And that's what I want to speak about today, about how that you can administer and be conscious of the finished works of Jesus for you. I want to remind you that health is one of the benefits of the finished works. Before sin came, there was health. And sin was the one that broke everything into man's nature to make him vulnerable to sicknesses in other words by man's default nature in righteousness we do not have the ability to be sick when we take of the communion what it does to us is that it emancipates us it elevates us it takes us out of the doldrum of our human nature and positions us into a divine nature it gives us a chance to participate in the original glory that Adam was. So the communion is not just an ordinary element that we eat when we are just we just come to the church. It says you should eat it discerningly, discerningly. If there's a word like that, and it wants us to take it consciously, knowing that you are eating what Jesus has done for you. That if Jesus broke His body for you for your salvation, He gave you His blood for your healing and deliverance for your emancipation from every kind of life situation it says we should eat it knowing that jesus has died for us and was buried for us and was resurrected for us and that his blood is made valid even in the time of us he said so that scripture says in ephesians 4 verse 27 giving no place to the devil and that's what i want to try to address here today that in the course of your ordinary day and ordinary activity do not give place to the devil somebody says pastor how can i give place to the devil how does that mean in practical terms if you read the present side of that scripture it says do not be angry let's go there in ephesians chapter 4 let's just take a look at it ephesians chapter 4 and verse 27 so it says there in 27 neither give place to the devil now if you read the preceding verse it says from verse 25 wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members of one body now verse 26 says which is the one before 27 that says give no place to the devil it says be ye angry and sin not what it means is that anger can lead us into taking wrong actions when we go through the day and we get angry somebody is you know upsetting you what you are doing without knowing is that you are giving place to the devil and he's saying don't let that anger upset you to, to the point where you start to have migraines or giving situations that can corrupt how you feel 
you know you lose your joy you get angry you get so bitter with your tastes practically you even lose appetite sometimes you know and people can really be that annoying and i, I just want to point that out to you that one of the things you must watch out for is not giving place to the devil to take advantage of your ordinary course of living or ordinary situations of life saying that do not give place to the devil from anger he says be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath neither give place to the devil so what he's saying is that from our anger we might be giving place and that's what i want to speak to today that when you go through the ordinary course of your day if you are not protective deliberately protective of yourself your emotions and the people you interact with you can find yourself giving satan a place May he find no place in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So you want to watch out for how you conduct your activities. You know the Bible says that when you cast out a devil, the devil goes out looking for where to rest. When he doesn't find anywhere, he says he wants to come back to that place. That is your house. And he says, let me go back to my house. He's thinking that your heart is a house for him. You must know how to not give place to the devil. Not give a foothold. You know, you know the measure of what an enemy needs to assess you is a foothold just and a foothold simply means the step in the door when a door is trying to close and you put a foot by the door that portion of space is enough for an adversary to penetrate he says don't leave a foothold for the devil so when you go through the day don't leave a foothold for the devil when you notice a slight headache don't leave a foothold for the devil when you notice you're having bad back pains and you don't leave a foothold for the devil don't leave anything for satan to the, satan never leaves anything small he multiplies his wickedness are you getting what i'm trying to say here now on the strength of that god's word says rather than getting angry let us gather together and take the communion now the holy communion as we are uh, call it some people you know have understood this properly some have not that when we take of the holy communion it has the ability to introduce to inoculate life into our system and to bring revitalization to ourselves because by faith what we are taking is not wine it is the blood amen it's like taking a blood, blood transfusion is it yeah you take a blood transfusion it goes into your blood that blood of that person is entering into your blood it's no longer just your blood that is there anymore there's an inoculation of something else the proper blood so to speak into your blood vessels now what this seems or simply means also is that by faith jesus's blood is inoculated into our body system and whatever is not able to stay in the blood of jesus will not stay in your body guess what if you meet jesus today he has no blood in his body you know why he shed it for you he shed it completely emptied himself from blood from human blood just so that you can be sound so today i want to ask that as we take off the holy communion don't just take it for granted today i want you to participate in it very deliberately knowing that you are not going to give place to the devil you are going to eat of the communion with soundness of heart and whatever thing has corrupted your spirit in the course of the day the lord is flushing it out of your body system in the name of jesus that as you discern the body of the lord worthily you are not going to be weak you are going to be strengthened you're not going to be sick you're going to be healthy and you're not going to die you're going to live in the name of jesus christ and i pray that as the righteousness of god has been conferred upon you that as you eat of this bread and drink of this blood life will be forged forged inside your spirit life will be forged inside your spirit and every part of you will come alive again for some of us you know they they tell us that some illness comes with old age that's not true that's not true let me tell you something abraham was of old age and his eyes were not weak moses was of old age his eyes did not go dim you can live a divine life and i'm praying that will be your testimony from now in jesus name so we're going to administer the communion today by the grace of god and i want you to please believe the lord god your uh, of your salvation and know that every part of his word to you in staying vital staying healthy will be realistic in your life in jesus name will come, become your personal testimony will become your personal reality in the name of the lord jesus christ now one more thing i don't want to forget to say is that in the course of not giving place to the devil don't become afraid of the devil because if you're not careful you start to walk with fear and say hey ha, maybe this one is going to bring me headache no no walk consciously that you have the victory of healing and that you are only administering this body and this blood to validate the finished works of jesus christ in your life i pray as you do so you have testimonies to show for it in jesus name i commend it to god and the word of his grace able to build you up and give you inheritance among those that are sanctified until i speak with you again next time please take keep taking the holy communion and please remain god's pride god bless you good amen 
I am Alexander Farankojo, Senior Pastor of Veterans Christian Center, Lagos, Nigeria. As one who has obtained grace in the things of God, I hereby invite you to join us at Veterans Christian Center as I'll take a series on insightful teachings and of course a celebration service in the next couple of weeks. I'll be teaching by the grace of God success and prosperity principles for family, finance and future. I and my men will also speak to the leader in you as God plugs you into dimensions of relevance in governance. You will succeed. Regardless of a terrain such as us, I see the future. Make no mistake, God is a God both of principles and miracles. You will experience both the healing power of God's word and spirit. Tangible miracles, I mean. So you see, with the word, spirit and liquid love in our midst, Veterans Christian Center is the place to be. Together we can, together we will, and together we shall build to God a glorious church. Join us today at Veterans Christian Center and become God's pride. Amen. Everybody put your hands like this